Please welcome Rachel Richardson, the creator of the blog, thefword.org. Also, fellow blogger Monique Van Berg, whose blog is called BFD.com for Big Fat Deal. <laughs> Big Fat Deal. Hey, the president of National Action Against Obesity. She's been on the show many times. Mimi Roth is here. And with a medical perspective on all this, Dr. Jennifer Ashton. Good to see you, Dr. Jen. Likewise. Well, Rachel, we learned your story there, but give us a little more information. You're, if you don't mind, you're about, what, 5'2"? Five, 5'3". Five, 5'3", 185? About 185. And I bet a lot of people say, look at that woman, she's unhealthy. Uh, actually, my friends and family who know me know that I am in better health than I ever was. How's your blood pressure? Perfect. Cholesterol? Fine. Do you have diabetes? No. So why do And I have a family history of it, too. And I still don't have Well, diabetes. you want to get across with these blogs that you shouldn't be discriminated against, but also what else? You want acceptance from the rest of society? It's more than just acceptance. We want to be recognized as human beings. We want to be recognized as people deserving of equal rights. We don't want to be discriminated against. We don't want to be stereotyped. We don't want to be profiled. Mm -hmm. um, Mimi, I'm going to let you jump in here because I thought something interesting that you told our producer early in the, uh, the pre-interview. You said th these people are making this effort to try to get fat to be accepted. You say it already is. Well, we're on the, the, the projections is that, that we'll have 75% overweight or obese in this country by 2015. And just to put some context around this, it, the New York Times article that came out saying in the fatosphere, big is in or at least accepted. Could you imagine if that headline had read thin and skinny rather than fat and big? The outcry would have been immediate and thunderous. And the reality is while anorexia is so serious, we lose about 200 lives a year to anorexia. With obesity, it's 800 lives every day. We've got to stop debating whether, the, you know, obesity is dangerous or not. But and we me, can't look at anorexia as the only alternative to obesity. Does fat definitively equal unhealthy? Here's what it defini definitively equals. An increased risk for disease and premature death. Now, we would hope that everyone on this stage is going to defy those odds. However, we can't e erase volumes of research that supports otherwise. Well, I'd like Monique, to point out this. that uh, a lot of research coming out shows that it's not the fatness that poses the problem. It's actually a lot of these so-called weight-related illnesses are actually the result of yo-yo dieting. And numerous studies have showed that it's fitness, not fatness, that's key. Okay, Monique. Yes. And I apologize because this isn't a gentlemanly to do. How tall are you? 5'9". Uh, and do you mind saying your weight? Uh, 240. 240. Okay, same question to you. A lot of people would look at you and go, Monique, oh, she's not very healthy. Right, yeah, no, that's an assumption that I think people make a lot about a lot of fat people. And it's that automatic assumption that we're unhealthy, that we're kind of trying to combat. I have really good cholesterol. I dropped my cholesterol by 25 points last year, whereas I didn't drop my weight at all. Um, so again, you're saying... You want acceptance. Sure, yeah. I mean, I think fat people are paid less than thin people. Fat people are ab abused on the street. I had someone write on my blog about how she was out jogging and someone drove by and threw garbage at her and uh, was yelling things at her. And then, of course, you know, I, I don't want to go out jogging again after that. So yeah. that's counterproductive to me, that kind of hate. And I don't think you can use self-loathing and shaming of fat people to mm -hmm. get us anywhere. So, Dr. Ashton, what is, what's your feeling about this? Can you be fat? Can you be overweight and still be perfectly healthy? Well, I think the medical answer to that, Juliet, is it depends. Uh, there's not, there's no yes or no simplistic answer here. We can't really look on height and weight. We have to look, and this can get controversial, at the body mass index. And I'm saying in an extreme sense, if you get to a number of 30 or above, that it doesn't matter how much exercise you do, how good your cholesterol, your blood pressure, your diabetes screening, your family history is, your risks do then start to increase, not necessarily for today, but for down the road. But I do think it's important for people to understand here that there is not a black or white answer to health, mm, and there yeah. certainly isn't one for beauty. I don't think we can look that's, that's at those answers totally and what's in a magazine. But I think a lot, like people know, I, a lot of people want to know, what kind of exercise do you do? What is your, what is your diet? You know, are you eating... Well, before I answer that, I want to point out some, and address something that Amy brought up. She quotes statistics that 75% of the population will soon be overweight or obese. Yes. I want to point out that when many people think of fat, they automatically think of the 500-pound man that has to be hoisted out of his home by right, a crane. True. But in 1998, the BMI standards were lowered from 27.3 to 25 to define overweight. In essence, 35 million Americans were turned overweight overnight. Is it so much that the population, 
is is going to is this epidemic, or are we just lowering standards? Well, so that but more they're they're lowering right. standards point. because of. Uh, I mean, the of health consequences. That, yeah, the, there are health consequences. So we want to get to uh, some more answers from mm -hmm. our doctor to find out, sort of clarify the situation for us. And, and we will hear from uh, uh, these women's husbands. What do they think about their wives? Okay, come right back. Be right back. Still another show. Welcome back. Hey, is it possible to be fat? And fit. Still with us, we have Rachel Richardson and Monique Vandenberg. They say yes. Also, Mimi Roth is here. She's the president of the National Action Against Obesity. Oh, and Dr. Jennifer Ashton is also with us as well. In our studio audience, by the way, we have Rachel's husband, Brandon, and Monique's husband, Ian, is also out there. They're, they're beaming proudly. <laughs> but it, I'll tell you what, Mimi, a question for you. Uh, these two women are here. They're happy with the way they look, and they say they're healthy. Why should we all care? about what their size is. It's a great question, Mike. What When we first heard about the fat acceptance movement, I think we all thought it meant that we wanted no one to be cruel to anyone at any size. And I think every one of us would agree to that. But what it's kind of become is somehow big is beautiful, a glorification of obesity, somehow obesity and feminism are connected. It's just really kind of gone off the well, bend. I don't think we're saying, and like, let's really all be fat. Like, hey, everybody be fat. We're awesome. <laughs> what are you saying, then? There's a tendency so to glorify and mislead, uh, encourage a wellness-based approach. We emphasize wellness, not weight loss. So you're not saying, because there are some people out there that would go, oh, these people are, are heavy women who just want to stay heavy, and they're jumping on this bandwagon and using this as an excuse. Like, See, hey, that, you can be healthy. Yeah. That is furthest from the truth. You Nobody in the fat acceptance movement is saying, hey, sit around and eat Twinkies all day. You know, a lot of us subscribe to a, a well, holistic wellness-based approach called Health at Every Size that encourages people to reconnect with their bodies, to listen to your body when it's full, when it's hungry, to exercise not just for weight loss, yeah. but for the myriad of health benefits that exercise brings beyond a, weight loss. A question uh, stimulated by her, uh, by Juliet's question there. I'm just w thinking about kids watching, and they're overweight already. They go, oh, this is cool. Let's, those ladies I saw on TV, they, it's okay to be chubby. It absolutely starts with loving yourself. When I was a self-hating teenager, I didn't exercise because I was afraid people would laugh at me. I didn't, um, you know, I was afraid, I just was governed by this fear and shame that I wasn't good enough. And I think I would have been a much happier, much healthier person as a teenager if I hadn't had all that fear and shame that I felt I was getting. Yeah. All right, messages. the thing is, if we all want to be healthy, Dr. Jennifer Ashton has some tips for us about everyone being being able to be, be healthy and the best steps that you should take. Right, What's and let's be one? clear, Juliet. We are, we, again, we're talking about the middle range here, not the very thin and not the morbidly obese. But the first one is don't eat white food, okay? That is has no nutritional value in sugar. white bread. White rice, white bread, white pasta, potatoes, sugars. Remove them from your diet. If you want to eat a pound of whole wheat pasta, that's much better for you than a pound of regular white pasta. The second one is don't drink your calories. Mm -hmm. It's a waste. It has, no, again, no nutritional value. We're not talking about pounds here. We're not talking about BMI. We're talking about nutrition and health. So don't drink things with calories in them. Especially that's just, alcohol. Well, in moderation. Mm -hmm. Again, we're talking in moderation. Yes, and you. lastly, because <laughs> to limit it to three, I know we're short on time, get enough sleep. There have been a lot of studies that show that subadequate sleep directly increases the body's cortisol levels, which then can lead to a factor. And of course, we're talking about genetics and environment here, but a factor what is for enough obesity. Sleep? What is Well, the average hours? recommend, no, <laughs> you probably get four, right? <laughs> the average is seven and a half oh, hours man. of sleep a night. Okay. Okay. Everyone's different. Some people need more. Some people need less. But that's one of the best things. I just wish it was black and white. You look at these women and go, they're healthy or unhealthy. But it's not black and white. It's that's why the discussion is so good. We continue it on our website, which is imjshow.com. Thank you all very much. For Thank you very much. If you're links to Rachel Monique's blogs, you can check out our website, imjshow.com. Yeah.